Hello and welcome back to Conspiracy Cats. Now, before we get into all the flat earth madness, who remembers that TV programme, Land of the Giants? <laughs> yeah, that programme absolutely terrified me as a kid. I'm so glad it's not real. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. No, go away! I've got the camera like this because I'm going to focus on these spots of light on the ceiling here. Yeah, so this is Phuket Word, one of our favourite flat earthers, and later on in this video, he's going to be showing us exactly what's been confusing him this week. But we're not going to be watching that alone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this week's guest host, famous flat earther, Ranty Flat Earth. Hello, silly flatties. Oh, hello. Excellent, Ranty. I can see you getting into the spirit of things. Um, have you been looking forward to this? Absolutely can't wait. Excellent. And while you're here, why don't you take a little bit of time to plug your channel? What's, uh, what's been going on with your channel lately? Yeah, my subscriber count's going down. Actually going down. Oh, that's fantastic news, buddy, and I don't think anyone will be surprised by that. Um, what else are we going to look at this week? I know, the most ironically titled video in Flat Earth. Yeah, proving the Earth is not a spinning ball in under two minutes in a video that only takes nine minutes and 33 seconds. <laughs> Do you get that, Ranty? Like, how long should that video have taken? Two days or... Anyway, before we get into that and more, let's find out what's been happening in Flat Earth this week. Conspiracy Cats is another one of these dickhead priests that tells people you can have a gas pressure in the middle of a fucking vacuum without some kind of membrane. Yeah, Flat Earth's sleeping warrior isn't happy with me and he totally loses it in a live stream. But don't worry, I believe he's now getting exactly the help he needs. How are you feeling now, pal? I'm great, thanks. Did you know I'm a physics teacher? Anyway, uh, Nathan Roberts appears on Flat Earth and other hot potatoes, and while he's there, he tries to disguise the fact that he's breaking wind slowly. But that doesn't get past Patricia Steer, who provides a lovely running commentary. He's letting it out um, piece by piece. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Our guest host, Ranty Flat Earth, has been on holiday, filming more boats going over the horizon, and then denying the fact that there is indeed an actual horizon. As soon as I saw it on the on the video, it's it's like all the other boats. To be fair, in in this video, they're all the same. They've all got this compression issue going on. Yeah, you see, Ranty Flat Earth makes a habit of filming boats go over the horizon, watching them disappear from the bottom up, and then claiming there is no such thing as a horizon and there's a mystical physics that nobody else understands called compression, which causes things to appear to disappear from the bottom up. Um, let's check out my favourite video of his. Compression, 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 compression. Yeah, Ranty, the rest of the Flat Earth community were really upset with you after you proved curvature with that video, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, I learnt my mistake. Yeah, Ranty did learn his mistake, and when he was on holiday, he decided to come away from Flat Earth videos and try his hand at stand-up comedy. Check this out, I nearly wet myself. I'm seeing these guys, and I say, right, yeah, you're just passing Clan Dudno now, and they go, "No, we've just come out of the, we've just come out of the estuary." <laughs> so it's okay. Honestly, it was it was comedy gold, comedy gold. Hey, Daniel, man, I've got one for you, right? I said to my mate, "You're in Clan Dudno," and he <laughs> he said, "No, I'm just I'm just coming out of the estuary." <laughs> he said he was just coming out of the estuary. Maybe I didn't tell it right. Apparently this happened. Now I've pulled several all-nighters and I have figured something out and I will present clear evidence that Conspiracy Cats is a Satanist. I know, right? Uh, I've linked that video in the description. Um, to conclude our roundup for this week, the Flat Earth community is still reeling from Nathan Oakley showing everybody that he doesn't know what diffraction is despite the fact he tells people things disappear from the bottom up due to diffraction. So there we go. So I'll ask one more time, what is diffraction? I'll give you 10 seconds, go. What's diffraction? Oh, it's quiet. He doesn't know what diffraction is. To be fair, you didn't give him 10 seconds. Oh, I'll give you 10 seconds to Google it. Go on, what's diffraction? Now, since Nathan's embarrassment, the Flat Earth community have been rallying around to support him, especially in the comments section. Check this out. By the way, this is the last time Flat Comes First will ever feature in Chatbox Travels. 
Hello, it's me again, Flat Comes First, Flat Comes First. Check this out, you total bag face, space comma. Nathan was talking about the limit of diffraction, no space comma. Not actually the diffraction, space comma. Can you not see they are not the same thing at all? Why should he know, random space comma, what diffraction is when he m mend the diffraction limits? Brilliant. Uh, and by the way, this whole space comma thing really appears to be catching on. Check this out. And this. So imagine my delight this week when on another channel I saw Nathan's failure to understand diffraction and the space comma being mentioned in practically the same breath. Conspiracy cat, it's my friend Nathan. He is desperate to learn about diffraction. He is struggling to understand it and it's getting him down. Hang on, oh, it keeps disappearing. Do you think he will manage to do it? Space comma. I couldn't help it. I don't know if it meant to say space comma there. I think we all know it did. Um, but what is your opinion? Will he ever understand diffraction? It's as if he just cannot see. As if he, somehow his mind will not wrap around it, whatever happens. Um, that, that's the feeling I get conspiracy really strongly. Um, I agree. Now, even Ranty Flat Earth is trolling Nathan about this. Nathan, you can't dis you can't describe diffraction, can you? Yeah, say it like you mean it, pal. You should look it up, Nathan. That's better. Um, I wonder if anybody else has been talking about it. Can you please tell me if my friend Nathan will ever understand diffraction? <laughs> no, he won't. He's just not. He's not going to grasp it, is he? Let's face it. Look, what's up, conspiracy? Welcome to the stream. Are you new to the channel? How you doing? My friend Nathan will even ever under understand diffraction. I don't know. Yeah, I racked up about twenty-five of those this week. Um, I'm pretty immature, but he was a man that definitely does understand diffraction. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So this is Professor Dave Explains. He's got an absolutely enormous science channel, but this week he dipped his toe for the first time in the craziness that is Flat Earth. Um, the video, I've got to say, is one of the most comprehensive I've ever seen, and the backlash to it in the comments section from the Flat Earthers is equally as spectacular. I've linked it in the description. Definitely go check it out. Now, where were we? Of course, the way we see the stars appear to uh, rotate or cross the sky, depending on where we are looking, uh, is used as some kind of proof that we are on a spinning globe. Ah, yes, back to Gigantor. Now, Gigantor here is talking about star trails and how in the heliocentric model, star trails provide evidence for a spherical Earth. I'm going to let my new science advisor, Mama Saint, explain why. Well, you see, it really is quite simple. In the northern hemisphere, stars will rotate in an anticlockwise direction around a celestial pole. In the southern hemisphere, they will rotate again around a pole in the clockwise direction. But more importantly, not all stars are circumpolar. This means some will dip below the horizon. Now, to find out if a star will be circumpolar, we must find its declination. And if the declination is greater than 90 minus the latitude of the observer, then it will be a circumpolar star. Now, there is no other geometric shape other than a sphere that will allow for these observations. Trying to explain this away on a flat Earth will lead to many, many problems, as we will soon see. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you, Mama Say, and get well soon. Now, Gigantor has a brain 20 times the size of a normal human. So let's listen to his take on the situation. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate how it's possible to uh, see or interpret what we see when we look at the stars as all the stars rotating together uh, while the Earth is stationary and level. Excellent. So what you're going to do is simultaneously debunk the conclusions drawn by the greatest astronomers in history and all the pictures that we get from all the space programs around the world. You're going to debunk all of that. You must need some serious equipment. What are you going to use? This uh, decorative lamp fixing. What? This uh, decorative lamp fixing really <laughs> no you're not in this one so go on then giganto do your stuff i'm going to turn that lamp fixing so that uh, this, these stars 
uh, move across the sky and we can see that these stars appear to rotate from left to right. Okay, so I can only assume that the light fitting on that ceiling is a celestial pole and the stars are moving left to right, which means they're going in a clockwise direction around it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is go move the camera and basically turn it around so that we're facing the other direction. Totally impossible. And what we see now is the stars coming in from the right to the left. Right. And how's that relevant? Okay, hope that helps. Not really. Let me try and clear this up. Okay, so this is what I think Gigantor is saying. He's saying if the stars are actually moving, and Gigantor's head represents the stars at the minute, then if we look in this direction, we're going to see the stars going from right to left in that anti-clockwise motion. But if we look in this direction, we're going to see the stars again moving from right to left, still moving in that anti-clockwise motion. But if we build a spaceship and fly to the other side of the stars, whatever they may be, and we look in this direction, then we can see the stars moving left to right. I think that's about it. What do you think about that, Ranty? Screw that. Well said, buddy. Uh, now, before we go, there's just two things I want to show you. The first one is this. Well, there's this YouTuber called uh, Flat Earth Data. There certainly is, Rory. Why'd you bring that up? Basically, he said that he would delete his channel if I could complete his challenge. Well, I've completed it, so let's see what happens. Yes, Rory has completed his challenge, and I'm really interested to see how this plays out. Um, Rory, if you're not aware of him, is well worth a, a subscription. Quite new to the scene, I think, uh, but I certainly like his stuff. Uh, the second thing I want to show you is this. Yeah, it's a little bit of flat earth ASMR. Now, if you're not familiar with ASMR, and I wasn't, it's where people speak really quietly and try and put you to sleep. Really relaxing, fantastic stuff. Let's check it out. All right, here's our handy dandy chart to show Polaris. See it? Polaris. Uh, the Big Dipper handle, the Big Dipper scoop points to it. So come feel the vibe, like and subscribe, and take off your hats to conspiracy.